Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today, um, we're going to review some paint. Uh, I was sent a 32 color set for Mei Liang. It's a, um, a student grade watercolor kit. It uh, includes 32 colors and uh, they're really pretty. I was having a lot of fun with them. So uh, they, were, they come in a box that looks like this. And on the back is some uh, samples of the colors here of all the color palette. And it comes with the paper with the color descriptions. And then I took a few minutes to do color swatching, which to me is very important. It's what you see in the squares. It's not necessarily what you see uh, when you paint. So the colors can be uh, deceiving in these little palettes here, in these little pans. Uh, so I take a few minutes and swatch. This was a bobo, so I guess when I was peeling off the papers, I, I stuck the um, the Payne's gray in the uh, turkey blue section <laughs> when I put it back in, and then I swatched. And then the rose red is missing because I wanted to show you how they come. So they, they come in the little box, and then each little pan has its own uh, sticker cover on this one. I found them a little bit tedious to get off all of these um, because when I get art supplies I just want to dive right into them <laughs> I don't want to spend my time organizing them but they come with these little peel off stickers which then I just stick to the back of the pan and shove it back in the box so I just have to swatch this last color which I will do right now and I just pop it back in and I'm just gonna wet it here and then just swatch it so it's nice because it, it really does show you the colors and the, the pigments and the saturation that you can achieve with these colors. So um, it also comes with a little watercolor brush, these uh, fillable watercolors brushes. So it's got a nice point to it. And then you just fill the reservoir here with water. Uh, I'm not too fond of these. I'm not going to demonstrate or review this brush today because I, I don't particularly like this style of brush. Um, I find it hard to control the amount of water I use, um, but they're great for traveling. They're great for a beginner. They're great for students. So uh, a little bonus in the kit there. So uh, let's let's play. Let's play with some color because I, I was gonna swatch with you guys, but you know what? I really want to paint with them. I wanna I wanna really have fun with them. So I have been playing with them a little bit. I've done some quick paintings here. Uh, so I've got a little woodpecker and um i did these guys so you can tell they're really quick they're not tons of detail we're going to paint him today and we're going to paint him uh twice because i don't have editing software i find um there's parts of the painting i need dried before i can proceed so i thought if we paint two in two different kind of styles one very loose approach and one more um deliberate then uh there'll be some dry time between and we can really have fun with it and then i did this here where i really played with the leaves and i practiced some lifting of the paint and stuff so we're gonna uh we're gonna play with that today so let's review these products together um i'll talk about the the product as we go and what i like there's really not much I don't like about it. I'll start with the price. The price is great. So you get 36 colors in this 30. They also have a 48, I believe. I was sent the 36 and it retails for 32 bucks or 33 bucks, um, which is a really great price for a starter, like for a decent watercolor kit. And like I said, it's, I would consider it a student grade or a, uh, I'm going move my lamp here, I'm congested with stuff. Um, a student grade or a um, beginner grade watercolor paint. So if you're, if you're at that phase or you want to experiment with watercolor, you don't want to spend tons of money, this is a great set for that. I'll give it that for sure. Um, what else did I want to talk about? So we'll talk about, as we're painting, what I like about it. Um, they did offer uh, my viewers, uh, the U.S. viewers can receive 20% off. This is not a sponsorship. This is just a review. So there's no kickback to me or anything. But there's a 20% off for uh, the U.S. 
within three days of airing this video. So you, I believe it's to the 31st, May 31st, that you can get 20% off on your order. So that was nice of them to offer that. Okay, so, uh, yeah, sorry. Let's, uh, let's talk about what I did here. So I have um, printed off, uh, on my Etsy shop, there'll be those birds that I just showed you, other than the woodpecker. The woodpecker's not included in that, sket, in that kit. Um, but you can print off, now if you're lucky enough to go onto your printer and print off uh, on watercolor, directly on watercolor, that's awesome. I don't have that ability, so sorry, it's a little damp here, it's splashed. Um, so what I did was I printed my drawing, and then I didn't have any transfer paper, carbon paper, so I did it old school, where you just rub on uh, a pencil, flip it over, and trace it and then it transfers to your watercolor paper. So it's a, a neat little trick to uh, do if you're um, really looking for an easy way to transfer an image that you'd like to paint. So I did it twice and hopefully I'm going to be in frame. I might have to constantly move these. Uh, I wanted to do two uh, for the reasons I had mentioned before about um, it drying. And then I just washi tape them down on some cardstock, some thick cardstock. Now these will bow and I haven't stretched the paper, haven't pre-saturated the paper and let it dry. I have just taped it down. So this is really just about having fun and playing. And we'll have some fun with that in just a second. There was something I was getting and now I can't remember what it is. Hmm. My brain. I need some tea. I have some tea here. I got my mint tea going. It should pet me up. <laughs> um, okay, so I have just grabbed a couple of paintbrushes. So as a student or a beginner, you're not have a, gonna have a big range of paintbrushes, of watercolor paintbrushes, because they're quite pricey. Um, so I just grabbed my cheapy one. So this is literally dollar store paintbrushes, except this one is a watercolor paintbrush. And I'm using it because it's the only narrow one I have. <laughs> All my other ones are fatter than this guy. And I wanted a, a little bit more of a detail brush. So this is a watercolor brush. This is a, um, a number two round. So that's the only watercolor brush I'll be using today. The rest will be just your standard dollar store brushes. Because as a student or beginner, you're not going to have tons of material. That being said, I did use a decent quality um, watercolor paper pad. And that's what I was just looking for. Now, I don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is. So, I did buy some half decent watercolor paper. Again, not the best watercolor paper, but a little bit better than your standard dollar store watercolor paper. So, this is um, Fabrino. It's not my favorite. Uh, I know a lot of people use it, uh, but it's for some reason I, I don't like the. Um, uh, the texture of it I find difficult for me, but that's just me. Um, this is a cold press. It is 9 by 12 and 140 pounds. So this is what I'm using today. So that is probably a little bit more high-end than student grade, but not unreasonable. It was it was 19 bucks, and there's quite a quite a lot in there. So you know, you you get what you you can afford or what you have access to. Okay, so Let's get painting. Not talking. I'm going to do a, a kind of a loose approach on this side and then more of a, a deliberate approach on this side with a little bit more detail and less back, background work. But if you've followed me before when it comes to painting, I am kind of all over the place. I like to I, I like to paint watercolors very loosely. So I'm gonna move I'm gonna drive you nuts today because I'm gonna be moving one back and forth. I was going to do it smaller, but I wanted to do, I wanted to go big, you know, I just felt like going big. And, but I want to keep my palette in view for you guys too. So I have a, a used piece of cloth that I use until I can't use it anymore. And my water is just outside the camera here. And uh, let's play. So I think I'm going to play with the background with some blues and browns. So I'm not going to start, uh, I'm not going to talk about every specific color that I'm using. I'll try and keep this in front of me and let you, kind of let you know. So this is a deep violet that I'm using. I probably won't mention all the colors I'm going to use because it's just too much. 
and you know when you've swatched your paints you can really have fun experimenting with the colors so I'm just going to drop some of this in the background I'm not worrying about too much on the um, details here you can see it's very loose I don't care if I hit the pine needles or not just want to fill the background in. I'm using my cheapy dollar store brush. So when you do start building up your materials, um, you would want to invest in some nice watercolor brushes for sure. Because they do make a difference. I'm just going to play. I don't have anything specific in mind. So this one is, I believe, yellow ochre. I don't have anything specific in mind for painting this. I am going to do the cardinal red. You might not even be able to see these colors on my camera because I'm doing a pretty light wash. But if you've seen my videos in the past with watercolor paints, you're going to see that I really don't have any structure. I'm not a professional watercolor artist by any means. I like to dabble with all kinds of mediums. I do really enjoy watercolor, but it's um, a medium that I pick up and play with. I don't uh, only use watercolor. I like to use acrylics. Uh, I have some recently come in to uh, some oil paint that a friend has given me that her mother has passed away. So she's given me some oil. So we'll be playing with those soon. But I thought it'd be nice to review this paint. And I, as you can see, it's got some really nice flow to it. It uh, dissolves quite nicely. You get uh, quite a bit of pigment in there, which is nice. Now, I can't really test for kind of fading or like fast quality here. It's, um, I would imagine it wouldn't have a very strong like it would fade for sure is what I'm trying to say just because it is a student grade paint but if you're gonna paint a nice painting even in a high quality paint I wouldn't hang it in the sun you know you don't put it on a wall that's exposed to a lot of sunlight it's just uh I just wouldn't want it ruined so it's just something to kind of bear in mind when when you hang or frame your artwork I wouldn't put it in any sunlight so I think this is the cobalt blue. And I'm just gonna play, it's turning a little green with the yellow ochre, which is nice. And again, just very loose. I'm going to take a smaller brush now. And I'm gonna go into some, let's go into some raw sienna. I make a mess of my paints, I should have rinsed that. just raw sienna and just kind of tap some in there and see what happens again not worried if you get it on the bird or anything this is very loose kind of has this really pretty gold look to it just want to play you know see what these paints can do and what i really like and like I said, I'm not a watercolor artist, so I don't have a huge range of watercolor paints, but the amount of colors that came in this palette was really, I was really happy and pleased because I was, wow, like, I don't have this many paints. <laughs> I don't have this many colors. I missed this part here. So that was kind of fun. Let's take a little of that off. That's why I always use um, paper towel or in this case shop towel because I'm, I'm controlling your water and controlling the, the amount of paint you use that comes with practice as well and everybody will paint in their own style and way of doing it so uh, people like to pre-mix their colors on their palettes I'm more of a throw it in and see what happens kind of painter <laughs> which might not be your style you might like more control not that you have tons of control with watercolor paints. They do kind of have a mind of their own, but the more practice you you allow yourself to have and experimentation you do, the more you'll get to see what you like and what you don't like about them. 
I'm just going to pop a little bit more drama in here with some Payne's Gray. So I'm going to just drop a little in there, kind of darken and saturate some spots. I'm still using my little brush here. Remember, watercolor does um, dry much lighter. So don't be afraid of it. Have some fun with it. It's only paint. What have you got to lose, right? Just experimenting and seeing what you do and don't like. All right, so I'm going to put that to a side for a minute. And then I'm going to let that one dry for a bit. While we play with the next one. I hope that doesn't... Woo, almost knocked my water off. hope that doesn't drive you nuts. <laughs> Moving my palette every five... My painting every two minutes. More tea. So the paint saturation uh, in this kit, I find quite good. Um, it's got some really nice colors, as you can see with the swatch. And a nice, a, a really good range of color in this kit. Uh, so it's... Uh, I would definitely recommend this paint is what I'm trying to say. I think it's a really a nice beginner quality paint kit. So I'm just using my medium sized dollar store brush now and I'm gonna paint him in. So I'm just gonna, this time I'm gonna take a little bit more detail time with filling in some spots because I don't wanna paint the leaves red in this one. So this one's going to be a little bit more structure to it. A little more rigid, so to speak. So I just mixed a very light orange. So you can see I didn't go straight in with a bold red, even though cardinals are pretty red. I want to build up my color. And that's why I need some of it to dry. So that I can play with these colors a bit. And what's nice about watercolor is you can do these really fun effects where uh, you can let the paint pool, which can create the illusion of feathers. So you can really have fun experimenting with that. I should probably switch to my little brush, but hey, it's me. <laughs> so I let that dry and then I'll switch to my little, uh, my actual watercolor brush and I can start painting in some of the green that's not close to the bird. So I'm going to take this yellow green. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take some of this, uh, which, what's this one? Is this the olive green or tree green maybe? I'm going to try and find my olive green because it's the olive green I like. So that's the nice thing about this swatch little menu here here it is so this will be my olive green I like the olive green I find it a very nice warm green so I have that that I mixed with the yellow green I'm gonna put some yellow green on its own and I'm gonna start with the yellow green and a little bit more water thin it down so you can really play with that you can play with the um, the uh, saturation so you can have a, a really deep more opaque color or you can really have it watered down and playing with that is a lot of fun too again experimental see what it is that you like about it and so i'm just filling in a thin coat of this green to start I'm not worried about what branches in front or what pine needles in front or what's behind see how it starts to create these little pools here uh, that's what i love about watercolor I'm just going to pop the green in. So this is painting, painting wet on dry. When the first one we started was kind of a wet on wet. Though I didn't really wet the paper first. I just used a lot of water. So I stay out of this area right now because I don't, I don't want any bleeding in this painting. Or at least not yet. We'll see where it takes us. And I'm just going to fill in all my little bits and pieces here. So again, if you want to paint along with me on this specific cardinal, um, you can get the drawing and uh, trace it out. Or I wish I could paint uh, print directly on watercolor paper. That'd be awesome. But I don't have a printer, so I have to go out and get my stuff printed. And they, they'll only print on their paper. It's a bit of a bummer. 
but you can easily transfer it like I showed you. Or you can buy carbon paper, whatever you, whatever you have. And just paint along with me and try both techniques. Try the loose approach that we're doing and try this more deliberate, uh, delicate look where you're really staying within the lines and practicing maybe your detailing. I'll do these guys. This is still a little wet, so I'm going to leave that for now. I'll keep working on this one while that other one's drying. So now I'm going to go into this uh, olive green mixture that I made. And these should be pretty dry by now, I hope. And I'm just going to darken the one behind with this olive green. Just to start building up some form here on these... Uh, little pine needles and what goes behind I'm just going to darken just take my time filling it in so yeah I've, I've used these paints to paint a few birdies now and I do really like them so I would recommend them they're a great beginner and uh we can play with some lifting. So lifting, I really like. I'll show you it in a little bit when we've got a little bit more color down. But lifting is where you kind of remove the paint back up. And it's a really fun technique to play with. And these paints lift quite well. Now, a lot of that will do with the, the paper as well because you need a decent quality paper that can take a little bit of abuse. Um, if you're using a cheaper paper, it, it might... Uh, Pill on you a little bit but it's still a lot of fun to try it I saw a video the other day and I don't know what channel I was watching it just happened to come across my feed and she used a she was doing something abstract and she used a toothbrush and a stencil to remove some watercolor paint and created kind of this um, 3d effect with this stencil. I thought that was, that's really fun. I got to try that. So we might try that next with these paints. So just a little detail of playing with the, the form here of the pine and watching it, which ones go behind and which ones go in front. Now this should be dry enough to, to paint here. It's my biggest challenge with watercolor paint is waiting for it to dry. So I do tend to play with more than one painting at a time. That's helped me a lot. Play with uh, a couple of different paintings at the same time while the other one's drying, so don't get too impatient. Okay. Let's put the wood in while we're waiting. This one's almost dry. Yeah, let's just put some Let's put some bark in. So I'm going to go back to my um, uh, raw sienna because it's one of my favorites. And I'm just going to put straight raw sienna down here. I could probably go to a bigger brush now. Again, not a, not a paint, not a watercolor brush. But as you can see, and just it's all about layers and building up some colors here. We'll put some details in and play with it so I do need it to kind of dry so that what I've drawn shows through now those prints will be a very light print I drew mine a little bit darker because I did want you to to see the um, the drawing which I hope you can all right I think we'll do his beak while we're here so they have these kind of orange beaks so I'm going to use, what's that color? Orange yellow. No, sorry, cadmium orange. And I'll just mix a little bit of, teeny weeny bit of um, burnt sienna in there. And I'm just gonna give him a little coat on his beak. Just so that has time to dry. So I'm gonna move him aside again. And we'll go back to the, the loose approach. Okay, hopefully you can see that. And we'll have some fun here. Let's color him in. So I'm going to go back to my big brush. So my loose approach, I generally use a bit, a much bigger brush. So some orange. 
and some let's go into some more pinky red so let's go into the what would that is that called the carmine red this one and throw that in there let's get some bright reds going here again a thin wash because it's very loose and if the background's still wet and bleeds a little i'm okay with it if you get it into the uh, pine needles i'm okay with it and i'm just throwing the color down here so i'm wetting the paper make sure i'm wetting the paper where i want the pigment to go And then what I think I'll do for fun is let's drop some paint in. I'll go to my other brush here and let's get into the deep reds. I'll drop those in and see what happens. It's more of a pinky red. And I think I use the ruby red. So we're not putting tons of detail in here. Let's see how that dries and what we get, what effect we get. Different paints, different paintings will all give you a different effect. So now I'm just going to put in some, I don't want this video to be too long either. So I'm just going to put in the, the pine needles here. I don't mind the, the look of the sketch popping through. I kind of like it myself. And in both styles, in both a loose style and a rigid style, a detailed style of painting. And I want to paint these ones where it's going to pull the red into my greens. I think that's fun. Just pull that out. And then you can have even more fun with this after you've painted it and add some pen and really play with some patterns and details. So the possibilities with watercolor are pretty endless. And you can see there's some nice color range to these paints. Let's paint it in. Grab that red. Let the green bleed into the bird as well. That's that's kind of fun. Why not? So here it's even bleeding into the background and creating a purple, which is nice. So you can see the paper is bowing a bit. And when it bows like that, it will create these pools of water. Kind of gravity. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. I don't want to lose the shape of the bird completely. I'll throw some in here. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. And I'm just using one flat color right now. Okay. Let's go back to the bird. Put a little bit more in. Kind of build up some shaded areas a little bit around his eye here. Kind of drop in those rich pigments now. So we did it more of a wash. Now we can really kind of saturate it with more color. I feel like I need to put this red in the background somewhere. Let's do it. Let's do it. Maybe splattering. Again, nice and loose. Not overly concerned with the end result. I'm just having fun. 
just going to have fun and see where the painting will take me. See what these watercolors are capable of and what I do and don't like about them. And so far, I like what they're capable of. And maybe, <clears throat> let's put the, um, I'm going to let that dry a little bit before we put the branch in, but we can do his beak, so we will stick to that kind of orangey burnt sienna beak. And I'm going to do more of a saturation at the bottom, clean my brush, and then just pull that paint to the top so it's a little bit lighter on the top. We'll let that dry. And then we'll come back and put some more details in him. So we're at that phase for that one. I'll move him to dry. And back to this one. <laughs> All right. Let's go with the bigger brush for a second. And let's start with that kind of ruby red here. Let's put that in. It's a little less water this time and more pigment. Oh, maybe I will switch because I do want to keep it clean in here. I'll throw some of that in. Again, just building it up. I might put a little Payne's Gray in with this red. Let's try it. A little bit of Payne's Gray. Oop, that's a lot. Okay, so let's go back to this red. Grab a little bit of that. A little bit more water. There we go. Throw that in there. A little bit more rich. A little bit darker value. So the nature in which I paint is fast. So if, the, which is why I'm not a huge detail painter. I like to imply details as opposed to really stop and capture them all. So it depends on your style of what you like to do as well. You may be more into detailed paintings and capturing all the feather forms and things like that. So you would just kind of slow this process down a little. When I'm more about really kind of implying details with textures and uh, values of colors and things like that. So you, you really get to play with your style and what you might like. So I like my cardinals a little bit on the orange side more than the bright, bright reds. But so for me, where I want to put a feather indication is where I'll just kind of change the saturate. I'll change the color, not the saturation, but the color itself. And just kind of put some, maybe a little bit more shading in there. Aware and fluffy feathers kind of thing. And then leave sections of really bright orange. But that's how I like to paint. So there's, there's no wrong or right here. You just play with your style. I hope you paint along with me though and give this a, a try so that you can see it. See, and I'm a slobby painter. I slop stuff everywhere. <laughs> so I think I'll give his beak a little bit more color. So they kind of have these bright orange beaks, like a parrot shape. Okay, so let's play with more with the leaves. So let's get a little bold here, mix some of our red into our green, kind of create a greeny brown. So we have a pretty brown color there. Take some of that off so it stops mixing. And put maybe a bit more green in there, that yellow green. It's kind of got like a nice little brown undertone, red undertone here. And then let's let's throw some of that in to some of these spots. We'll put some in the. So I don't see how I don't paint all the detail. I just dab and create the illusion of that texture. That's how I like to paint. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna stay out of the red because I don't want it to bleed. I'm gonna stay away from the wet edges. 
Let's throw some of that in while it's <clears throat> while it's dry. And let's put in a little bit more here. And just throw in a little bit of that indication of red is kind of nice. And we haven't done anything in the background yet. So again, you can slow me down, speed me up to paint along with me. So when this dries, I want to show you this little area about lifting the color off, which is, a, I really like it. It's a fun technique and it's a great way to kind of make a, a few corrections in your, your painting. If you've say gone a little muddy or uh, again, pick the wrong color or you just want to brighten a spot up, it's fun. I'm going to put even a little bit more red in there, even though there's no red in pine needles. It's about being artistic and putting color in where you feel it needs to be. And I find too that kind of creates a, a harmonious kind of color palette within your painting. Kind of ties the palette all together, even though the elements are different. The pine is obviously not red, but it's it kind of plays nicely with the bird. So this brownie green again, we'll pop some of that in. And I just pick in a few spots. And I'm loose, even though this painting's designed a little bit more structured than the other one we're doing, I'm still pretty loose with my brush. My cheapy dollar store brush. It's pretty beaten up. <laughs> Let's go back with some of the red and throw some of that in there. Because why not? You really have fun with your color palette. I mean, we've created all these colors and we've really only used what seven colors so far I think this one needs a bit more green up here let's go pop some nice bright yellow green in here Okay, so I think we'll let, maybe we'll, uh, should we do a background on this one or should we just leave them? Well, let's do a little something, a little something, some green in the back, you know, nothing huge. Just kind of mop it up a little bit, just a little something so it's not stark white. You might like the crisp white too, there's nothing wrong with that. I just prefer to give a little something, maybe a little bit of this red down here. I'm gonna leave some white, a little bit of red in this corner, there, just something. But I'm gonna leave the majority of it white. Okay, I'm gonna move him aside again. Come back to this guy. He's starting to dry so you can see how the colors go significantly lighter. And you just keep kind of having fun layering the colors on. So I'm gonna to go to a, a nice deep orange here. I believe this is scarlet maybe, or vermilion. And I'm gonna pop that down. I think I'll add a little bit of orange to it. Just really saturate him now. We make them pop. Okay. Let's take some of that and put it back here. So now that my background's dried, these won't dissolve. It's going to stay very bold splatters like that. Let's get the stick painted in. So this is my um, yellow sienna, maybe? No, that's definitely not. That is more like sienna. Let's get him painted in again, very loose. Pick the 
this branch going behind. It's okay if it mixes with the bird. Put some of this color maybe in the pine a little bit. Just to pull them out from the background. We're going to introduce some. What colors do we have? We have coal black. Let's use a coal black because I've never used a coal black in watercolor painting. I've only ever had the paints gray. So now I have more colors to play with. Let's use it. So here it is here. It's going to be pretty black, I think. So I'm going to put it here our first coat and just let it dry and then because I've introduced that color I want to introduce it elsewhere and just kind of play with that color a little bit create some drama in here we're gonna put it in the branch as well when that dries a bit more Put some in the branches here. I'm going to use my little watercolor brush for that. Just want to pull in some of that color. Again, I don't know where this is taking me. I'm just having fun with it. could get very messy very fast. Like this got pretty messy, but who knows how it's gonna dry, so it could be really fun. You can't be fearful, you're just gonna have fun with it. Put a little bit in here. Bring some more detail back. Put in this branch back here. I don't want to get too close to the bird there because he's wet and I don't want to make too much of a mess. I don't want it to go too muddy. So you can see there's a lot of options with watercolors. Kind of find your style and what you like to paint. Okay, and let that guy dry a little bit. And come back to this guy, put some detail in him. So let's do his, around his face. Put that in, and his eye here. little beard. So yeah, I really do like these watercolors. I think you get quite a nice range of color. Uh, a decent pigmentation. And a really good palette for a beginner for sure and again this is the only watercolor brush I used so you don't need super awesome brushes to use this paint I would recommend a half decent uh, paper though Okay, let's tone that down a little bit with some brown. Let's build up a little bit of brown in here so it's not quite just black and white. And I am kind of moving relatively quick because this video is going to be very long. It was an ambitious project for sure. Pull that orange while that black is wet. Kind of pull 
pull some of that into his beak. And you can really play with the details here. So you can go into some nice reds and oranges and put feathers in if you want. So a real nice opaque, not as much water and just really kind of play with the texture of his feathers. But these nice little color bleeds here are what I really love about watercolor. Put some shading in if you want. So kind of underneath his belly here, be more shaded along the branch. Just pull that in. I don't know how long this video is. It's gonna be close to three quarters of an hour by now. So we'll start wrapping it up. So I will have the link for the um, paints and the discount code. If you're uh, interested, and the Etsy store too, if you're interested. And I hope you give, uh, give painting with watercolor a try. I hope you have fun with it. Be bold and experimental with it. Let's see, I'm gonna wait for this to dry and then I wanna do that lift. I don't wanna forget about that lift technique. <laughs> Let's go back to this guy. This guy's pretty messy. He's getting pretty messy. So I don't want to overdo him. I feel like this got a little away from me. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's do some lifting on this branch, for example. So I'm going to wet my brush. And I'm going to re-wet this section. And then I'm going to lift the paint off. And you see, it kind of just pulls it back, which is a really fun technique. You do need a decent quality paper to do that because as you as you're kind of scrubbing it will um, it will kind of pill the paper a little. But you can put a little highlight on his head here. You know you can put a we're gonna repaint this part too. This is a bit muddy for me. Put a little highlight on his chest. Just pull that paint off and there's quite a good lift to this paint. So I'm just pulling it off again. So that's a fun technique to do. So I'm just gonna actually pull this right off so that I can paint that part. Hopefully it won't run so bad. I got a little overzealous. So I wanna put his little beard detail back in because that's the signature of a cardinal is this bright red and this black beard he has around his face. I like to make sure I get the eyes right. I'll go back with some orange here. Just kind of really darken up that beak a bit. I want to leave that highlight of yellow at the top though. I like that. So there, that lifting is kind of fun. It creates new patches and highlights. You can really have fun with that. Put a little bit darker color in his tail here. Uh, what do we want to do? So maybe I'll change the green on this one to something a little bit more blue green. See if that punches it these guys a little more, which I think it will. It's kind of I feel like they got a little lost. Since we're going these bold colors. Let's pull some out.
there. I think that competes a little nicer. Than that pale, the pale one. I'd like to give him another, one more coat of orange. Just to really pop those highlights there. So I'm using the color quite thick. More like a gouache than an actual watercolor on that part. Make him a little orange, which could be a fun color to add. <laughs> you just keep going and going. And so it's got a little bit of orange here. So maybe we'll just add a little bit more orange to him. Pull that color right out of the foreground into the background. Just gonna tie those palettes together. Take some of that off, a bit dark. Cheer it up a little bit. See, that's real fun. You know, not every painting you make is gonna be a masterpiece, but you're gonna learn something every time you pick up a paintbrush. And with these watercolors at that price is a really fun way to experiment. Okay, I think his eye is good. Let's just maybe give it a little more nice thick coat of black right in here. It's a bit wet, so I've got to be careful. Okay, and that lifting effect, I hope you can see it with the branch here, how it pulled the paint off and kind of creates that whole softness it's really fun to play with okay so that one let's see if we're going to do any more with this one i don't want to do too much but you could definitely play more with the details let's see is this dry enough i don't think it's dry enough we could try lifting and just cleaning up this branch that kind of got lost in the bird but the bird's still pretty wet so i'm just going to see if i can absorb it where we could do a little bit more of a cleanup. So normally I would wait for that to really dry so that it would only lift the section I want. Kind of bring this leaf back. But it's still wet, so it's not really, but you saw how I did it on that other branch. So hopefully you got the idea. We do a couple of splatters on him and call it a day maybe see just something delicate and again you can go back with um like a white pen or a black pen and pull out and really have some more fun details with that but for this i just wanted to really just show the paint okay let's pull these off that will be it. We could keep going, but I want to make sure that we pull this off and you can see, and then we'll wrap it up. Now this washi tape that I use, I use over and over again. And then when I don't use it for my watercolor anymore, it ends up in my journal. And this washi tape, I think works great for, um, for watercolor. Just move him out of the way for a second. And let's see, it's starting to even pull away from the, uh, cardboard it's pretty wet <laughs> that's all right so you get some you can see the bright colors of this paint really fun okay just gonna move the palette out the way move these boards out the way and then we'll have a quick look here at the two different approaches you can see very very loose and more structured. And uh, I think it really showcases how much fun you can have with uh, a nice range of color and palettes like that. So they're pretty wet still, but very loose approach and very structured approach. And you could keep going. I mean, you could put way more detail in here. You could play with more detail in this, but um, we'll leave it at that for today. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you are interested in the paints, I will leave the um, link below. Like I said, they are offering 20% off to uh, the US on that link. And um, also if you're interested in drawing or in painting this bird or the any of the others I showed you, it will be on my Etsy. 
and uh that's it guys i hope you enjoyed that review i hope you uh, i hope i covered everything too i did the swatching saturation the flow we did pigmentation affordability just going over my notes here uh this is the uh, 36 color set at 32 and a half dollars i think um yeah so overall great student and beginner kit i i would recommend this kit for that Okay, it's a pretty good, it's not quite artist grade, but it is uh, it is a good, good starter kit for sure for that price. Okay, guys, thank you. Have a great day. Bye.